Hey everybody, I'm Allie and this is my YNR chat vlog for Sunday, August 9th. It has been a really, really emotional week. I just finished watching all of the episodes from last week and I have to admit to you that I cried every episode. Every single episode I was drenched in tears. My eyes are probably still swollen right now. It has been so emotional and I have to warn you, I'm kind of crabby today. Now I, I had heard that Melody Thomas Scott was leaving the show. But I was in denial. I was not wanting to believe that it was true and so I was just not thinking about it. Now it's been weeks since we've seen her and, and months before that since we've really seen her. And then after 25 years on the show they cram her entire exit into one week of developments, one week of material. And I am very unhappy about it. I'm very unhappy about it. Number one, that YNR would let her leave the show in the first place, she's Nikki Newman. She is a central character that they would let her leave over a contract dispute or over money, and you know they were probably just asking her to take less, which I don't blame her for saying no, especially not at her point, that you know, the point she is in her life. I probably wouldn't take a pay cut either. So I'm horribly upset that they would let her leave the show, and second of all, I'm upset at the way that they wrote the character off. Nikki loves Victor. Everybody knows it. You know it. I know it. We've always known that Nikki loves Victor. But it pisses me off that they let the character of Nikki go through the entire wedding rehearsal, the rehearsal dinner, um, letting Paul think that he's getting married tomorrow, and then have her tell him at the last minute that she can't marry him, clearly because she's still in love with Victor. And that, oh, and that she's probably going to, to leave town forever. So Nikki asks Paul to tell all of the guests that the wedding is off. So rude! And not even like Nikki. Not even like Nikki's character to ask Paul to tell everyone. And then she gives him a note, a note to tell him about Adam being gay and that he should watch out for Heather. It's so cowardly of the Nikki character to do that. And just a really horrible note for Melody Thomas Scott to be leaving the show on, in my opinion. Maybe you don't feel the same way, and if you don't, I can't wait to hear your comments or what your side of it is, but I think it's so rude that she did that, then goes to Victor's house, walks right on in, opens the door, just walks into Victor's house, and confesses her love for him. And I, I will admit to you that I <laughs> cried every moment, every moment of that last scene with Nikki and Victor, mostly also because I knew it was the last scene, <sighs> hysterically crying, like the inside of my heart just aching that this was it. And the flashbacks, especially, you know, <sighs> looking at Victor's young face and Nikki's young face and, 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 and thinking about the way that they met. It was so hard to watch that and knowing that this is the end of something, something major. And, you know, Victor and Nikki may have tried unsuccessfully, as Paul said, for 25 years to make their relationship work, but I have to admit that I would still try again. If the writers actually wrote Nikki and Victor back together in a believable way and, and let them have some level of peace, let them have some level of comfort at this stage in their life, and let them be a stable couple, one freaking stable couple on the show, I would so be down for that ride because to me, no matter who all Victor has ever been with, who all Nikki has ever been with, 
every road leads back to Nick, Victor and Nikki for me and for them. And that's not to say that I want Victor to just dump Ashley and go back to Nikki if if Melody were still going to be on the show. And it's not, you know, and I was accepting of Paul's relationship with Nikki. I think Paul is such a great man and he, sh he shouldn't be a consolation prize for Nikki. Just like Ashley or anybody else shouldn't be a consolation prize um, for Victor. Although I, you know, I have to say, Paul is such a great man, but um, that piece of jewelry that he gave Nikki in the end probably didn't help his case for getting her to stay because, I'm sorry, I, a ceramic ice cream cone amongst all of those diamonds, it just doesn't work. That was the most hideous piece of jewelry <laughs> that I had ever seen. Um, yes, it was emotional or sentimental or whatever, but just, Paul, just in the future, just go for the diamonds. Just diamonds will be just fine. Um, and also, I, I think that Doug Davidson was amazing this week, and you know, we need a compelling storyline for him, even if it's not romantic. I. I hope this doesn't mean that they backburner Doug Davidson forever. But Nikki and Victor belong together. They always have, they always will. That's just how I feel. And instead of having them get back together, of course, Nikki leaves the ranch. Nikki leaves the ranch without even saying goodbye to her children. Without even saying goodbye to Catherine. After 25 years on the show, there were no final scenes between Nikki and her children or Nikki and her best friend. Victor goes out into the rain to chase Nikki, but he winds up at the chapel instead and he confesses to God that he still loves her. But it's too little too late. Nikki is wandering outside in the rain looking for a taxi and Ashley has been having hallucinations about Sabrina all night, so she goes out for a drive and hits Nikki with her car. So now what? Is Nikki dead? Is she still alive, but she decides to leave town anyway? I can't believe this is, this is the ending? This is the ending? I'm so annoyed. <laughs> I'm so annoyed. One of those people who are afraid of change. I'm not afraid of change um, <laughs> and I, I usually try really hard to focus on the positive things about the show, the things that I like about the show, but it does piss me off that they would let a character like Nikki go acting like it was a money dispute when they keep expanding the cast. They keep bringing on newer, younger characters. <sighs> You know, um, I think part of my annoyance, too, is coming from the fact that um, I listened to a radio interview with Christoph St. John. Someone sent me a link to um, an interview with him, and thank you very much, because it was a really enlightening interview, and um, Christoph St. John, who plays Neil, was very frank about, um, you know, the way he felt that the direction of the show was going, and him not necessarily being pleased with it, and certainly not about his character, and about, you know, things in general. <clears throat> Um, usually I don't watch those things because I kind of like to stay focused on what's on screen and, and I'm all about what my emotions are, what my emotional reactions are to the show and that's the reason I don't, you know, listen to spoilers or seek out spoilers and I don't seek out interviews um, with the actors or anything. I just, I want to enjoy my show. It's like a little bubble for me. Um, <laughs> a little bubble of non-reality where I can escape to. Um, so normally I don't listen to those kind of interviews, but it was <laughs> really interesting to get his perspective on things and um, Christoph was talking a lot about um, uh, the, the direction of the show within the last couple of years, and specifically about the marginalization of the black actors or the black storylines um, on the show. And um, it's very true. It's very true. And he makes a lot of really valid and interesting points about race and YNR. Um, but I can also see um, a marginalization of the older actors within the last several years. And speaking from my age bracket and just who I am, I want to see older characters on the show. I, I, I want to see cultural diversity. I, I think that that makes, you know, it makes the show appealing. And, and I don't think that you know, in order to appeal to younger viewers, it has to be all storylines about Kane and Lily all day. You know, and I want, 
I want Nikki and Victor on the show and Catherine. I want that diversity and I feel like there is so much opportunity to make these storylines culturally relevant and representative of all ages, types, all kinds of people, and yet we still always come back to the same stories about Lillian Kane and the same old stories with Phyllis and Nick and Sharon when there's so much opportunity to do something better. And like I said, I'm not a complainer. I really usually, you know me, I like to focus on what YNR is doing right and I like to be positive. But when I see them killing off characters and pushing characters to the sideline that made me love YNR in the first place, the things that remind me of my past and connect me to the show and remind me of why I started loving it in the first place, the stories about the Newmans and the Abbots and the Chancellors and the Winters and those core storylines and those core characters, when I see those people being pushed off the show, you better believe I'm going to comment about it. But I'm going to post two other videos today, and they're going to be equally as annoyed. <laughs> so if you want to hear me complain today, then uh, look forward to those next few videos. I will see you guys then.